Welcome to Value Through Vulnerability. This is a podcast dedicated to putting the human back into humanity. And this morning, I'm so grateful to have Lubna Forsley from the founder and the managing director of Stories. So welcome to the podcast, Lubna. Thank you. Good morning. Well, look, thank you so much for joining me today. I, I have to say, I, one, love your TED Talk, and B, thank love you. the name of your company. So would you mind maybe just speaking a little bit about what was the origin of Stories? How did that come about from you? Um, so I, I called my company Stories because I really uh, believe that the only thing that really matters on our deathbed is the story we leave behind. Um, and I, this basically um, is inspired by my childhood because I lived um, a childhood through, through the Lebanese war. Um, and because I've had, I had gone through that, I had actually seen people die right in front of me. I had seen buildings fall right in front of me. Um, and, and, and when you go through something like that, you realize that everything in life pretty much is replaceable. Buildings are replaceable, homes are replaceable, clothes are replaceable, money is replaceable. And it kind of gives you perspective on life. It makes you realize that all of these things that you work so hard to chase are replaceable. But the one thing, or one of the few things that are irreplaceable in life is that story you leave behind, because on your deathbed, that's the only thing that you leave behind. Um, so that name was inspired by my childhood. Um, but I, I choose to see it in a very, with a very positive life. So I, I believe that stories move the world, uh, positive stories move the world. So that's why I called it story. It's... It's so beautiful. Thank you so vulnerably, you know, straight into the, the theme of this podcast, Livna, you know, speaking about that journey. And I can only, well, I can't, I can't even imagine what it must have felt like to have experienced that war firsthand, Livna, really. Uh, it's actually, uh, I mean, now I look back on it uh, and I think it's, uh, it's not so much a positive thing, but it can be seen as a part, very positive thing. I think if you look at my character today, um, it has taught me some of the most positive things in my life. Like I'm quite um, a strong character by nature, but I think that was inspired by my childhood. It taught me to have faith. Um, it taught me to keep things in perspective. Uh, it taught me to find a solution. You know, there were days when we used to wake up and the electricity would be off, for example, and we'd have no AC or no heat. Um, nothing to cook with because there was no, you know, the cooker wasn't working, um, no light. So, so when you go through something like that, you also learn to find a solution for every problem. And I find sometimes in life, a lot of people find a problem for every solution and I try to do the opposite. Um, so you become very solutions oriented. So, and I think that's a really good skill to have. So overall, um, I think it has been a really good thing that has shaped me. Um, and now, I'm a mom myself and I look at what my kids go through and how they respond to fear. And sometimes it pisses me off. I'm like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I've gone through like, <laughs> you're scared of the spider. Come on, it's just a spider. I have gone through much worse in my life. But it's hard because kids don't understand that and they don't relate to that. Um, but yeah, I don't see it as a bad thing. I see it as a good thing. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's really powerful. And I, and I can really see that from you know, your TED talk, from your journey, from how you even communicate. It's really inspiring and I think there's a lot of parallels aren't there with sort of there seems to be a lot around mindset here as well I'll come on to the work you do around storytelling there seems to be this thing around what are the stories actually that we tell ourselves that stop us being yeah. that best version or stop us dealing with our fears or stop us just almost trusting ourselves a bit mm -hmm. I agree I agree I think people are driven and very impacted by fear and I think, um, you know, they shouldn't be. You know, I was talking to, uh, doing a podcast with another lady about two months ago. And we were talking about fear. And she, she just stopped me for a second. And she's like, you know what? You should be actually just become a fear consultant. <laughs> Charge people a lot of money for that. <laughs> because you can make a lot of money from teaching people how to deal with fear. And um, maybe she's right. Maybe one day I'll become that. Um, but I think, you know, you look at, you step back a little bit on life and you realize that the reason why people like Tony Robbins do really well, apart from the fact that he's super, he delivers his 
message really well is because he helps people overcome fear he helps people find courage he helps people find meaning and at the end of the day that's what people are looking for they're looking to find meaning they're looking to find purpose they're looking to find the way to have the courage to overcome whatever is stopping them from finding these things so i think it's really really important to work on that as much as possible i mean that's uh, for me it was it's not something that i it just it just happened because I had to go through that, right? So it's not something that I had to teach myself. It just, it was a consequence of my life. But I look at how I raise my kids now and I find them quite fragile compared to what I went through. Um, and I try somehow to step back every once in a while and, and think how could I make them face fear in a better way? How could I make them more resilient? Because um, that's, that's hard to teach, right? <laughs> mm. It's, it's really interesting, isn't it? Because you sort of, what I hear as you talk, Ludwig, and also certainly what I see across my network and indeed across the world is this, you know, the fact you and I can connect now as we are over this technology and record this wonderful conversation. It's the same technology that almost gives us too much information at once. So it's almost like this paradox, isn't it? To some right. extent. Mm -hmm. so, so, so how do we... I agree. And I... Yeah, go, go sorry, ahead. Sorry, please. No, 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 go ahead. I, so I was just also really interested in, you know, as well as the stories that we leave behind, which I think so powerful, and I've really started thinking a lot about that myself, is you speak beautifully in your TED Talk, and I'd like to explore this a bit with you as well, is around, you said, motherhood, that nobody leads mm -hmm. like a mother. And one of the things that mm -hmm. struck me more than anything is when you reference the word unconditional, and I'd love to speak, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear you speak a bit more about that because I don't think we have enough unconditional care in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the reason why I brought this up uh, in my TED talk is be, I really believe that um, mothers are irreplaceable. And I think that sometimes mothers are taken for granted, especially when they want to come back into the workplace. Um, you know, I, I counsel, I'm a partner with a, a, an entity that helps mother come back into the workplace and I you know regularly interact with a lot of mothers and they constantly feel like when they go to interviews they constantly get asked so what did you do and oh oh you were just a mother and it kind of pisses me off when I hear that what do you mean you're just a mother just a mother you are where you are today because a mother raised you mm -hmm. um, so that that sentence just a mother for me doesn't work. And I really believe that you can take everything away from me today. You can take away my project, I can find a new project. If I have the brain to find a new project, you can take away my job. So many people hang on to their seats and it's completely irrelevant because you can take away my seat or my job. And I, if you have the brain and everybody has the brain, right? You just snap out of it and find another job. Um, so for me, the, that job that you can't take away from anyone is that job of a mother. And unfortunately, it's taken for granted. Um, so, so that's the reason why I referenced it. But I really believe that moms are amazing leaders. I, I don't feel I've slowed down because I've become a mom. I think I have more fire in me today because I'm a mom, because I have a better mission in life or a bigger vision and mission. And I treat my kids with unconditional love because that's natural. Um, do I do that at work every day to everyone? No, I mean, I have to be honest and vulnerable here and say, you know, no, sometimes I don't treat people with unconditional love. Sometimes I treat people um, in maybe a tough way um, because at the end of the day, when you run a business, you're, you're not running a charity. And even if you're running a charity, you still have to, deliver on certain outcomes for the good of the world right mm -hmm. and so therefore you have to find a way to manage people and keep people in check but at the end of the day what i believe is that if you find the right people who actually believe in your vision and who share your values and they have the right skills to deliver what you need then these need to be treated with unconditional love um, because you need to just say Nobody's perfect. This person has X good qualities and X bad qualities, but I'm going to take this person holistically and I'm going to love them holistically and I'm going to um, grow them holistically. 
and accept them for who they are holistically, like you do for your own children. You know, nobody is perfect again. Um, but do I do that for every employee? No, I don't. Uh, I'm being honest with you because not every employee fits in every environment and not every employee has your best interest and not every employee wants to deliver. Um, and, but I do that for, in my view, whoever I deem is right and shares my purpose and has my best interest. And then, then and there, I actually go out of my way to reward them. That's wonderful. Look, Jesse, but that resonates so much. And I really love how you've spoken about, you've spoken about meaning and purpose and sort of connection as well. And I just think it's so powerful that it, it is easier to be unconditional when people are truthful, you know, trusting, you know, they show up, you know, it, it's not a case that you're judging or we're judging people um, based on the fact that they're good or bad or anything. We're just saying, look, do you believe in the mission that we're, you know, the bus we're on together, you know, do you believe in that bus or not? And if not, maybe it's the wrong bus. <laughs> Absolutely. I believe that with all my heart. I think, you know, uh, I'm a huge believer in Simon Sinek's work, uh, start with why. Mm -hmm. um, and he always connects the why of the company to the why of the individual. And when you have the why of the individual connected to the why of the company, that's when you create magic together and that's a sign of successful companies so i always encourage companies when they are recruiting people to make sure that they ask them why 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 do you want to come and work here and to make sure that they're not bringing in people just for the sake of the job or just for the sake of getting that paycheck at the end of the month but rather to bring in people who actually are connected to the vision of the company and genuinely want to be there to make impact Wow, my, you've really got my, you've really got my um, little buzz going now, Lebanon. I tell you why, because I'm just think, I'm reflecting on your, one of your irreplaceables, which is what story will you leave behind? And what I'm mm -hmm. hearing, what you just described is, do we, if we work with or work in organizations, do we spend enough time, A, discussing and making sure we are aligned to that why? And indeed, do we even see that as a collective story that we're going to leave behind? Absolutely. I believe that with all my heart. And you know, to, to be frank and fair, life is full of ups and downs for me and for everyone who's listening. And there are times in your life when you may need to work for the sake of the paycheck because it's a survival issue. Um, but if you are in that situation, I think it's really important to do it with integrity and to do it with purpose as much as possible. So you realize that you're actually there because you need the money to be there. Um, but while you're there to get that paycheck at the end of the month, you do it with as much purpose as possible. Um, but that won't fulfill you in general. I think you'll feel much more fulfilled if and when you have a chance in life um, and that's a case where it's not so much linked to your survival mode, to be honest, because uh, I've had both in my life. Um, uh, and when you're not solely relying on that job for survival uh, and you know your purpose and you know the company's purpose, then there's where magic happens because you're actually there because you want to make impact in the world and you want to be in a place that actually accommodates that. Beautiful. I, I, I really love that. And, you know, sometimes this, you know, if I think about some of the organizations I speak to or across the network, you know, this word purpose, although it's definitely becoming more mainstream, you know, if you look at look, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the business roundtable in the US, you know, BlackRock, we're talking about the importance of, you know, sustainable investment a couple of years ago. But I think it's quite scary for a lot of the, certainly, you know, let's be honest, men um, that are maybe a bit older, look cut the color skin that I have leading a lot of the organizations today. Um, how, do we, how do we help make it safe for maybe people, for senior leaders, leaders of organizations all over the world that are not used to having this conversation around aligning with a why or purpose or creating meaning for people? Do you have any advice around storytelling that might help senior leaders step into that space? Um, I think it, maybe they're not comfortable because men by nature, especially those that have families, feel like they 
they have to get that paycheck at the end of the month so that their family can survive. Um, and perhaps that's why they react the way um, they do. I think the best way to convince them to act otherwise is to make them realize that you're still going to get that pay paycheck at the end of the month and more. You're going to get that paycheck and have a much more fulfilled life. And because you're going to have a much more fulfilled life, your family is going to be better overall because you're going to be happier. Um, and, and when you are like that and you live a more fulfilled life and a life of purpose, your entire organization becomes like that. So you become more productive and you become more profitable. Um, and then you can get that paycheck plus plus because you're overall as a company much more profitable. So I think they need to see the bottom line, especially with men who are in senior positions. They, at the end of the day, they want two things. They want the bottom line for their company because they're under pressure to deliver the bottom line. And they want that paycheck at the, on a personal level. So on a professional level, they want to meet the bottom line for the company for professional purposes. And on a personal level, they want to get that paycheck at the end of the month so that their family can survive. So the best way to convince them to, to talk about purpose and to lead with purpose and to live with purpose is to make them realize that when they do, they're going to actually enhance these two things. They are still going to get the paycheck plus more, hopefully, because their company is going to be more profitable. And B, they are going to meet the bottom line because they're going to create a culture and a company that's much more happy and fulfilled, cohesive, cohesively together. That, that, that's so powerful. And I actually have a, an example within my own work and organizations where we actually start. We, it's funny enough, actually, Lubna, we, we, we used Signs for Next Start with Why around three years ago to, to build a value set, to build the culture of our team of 15 salespeople. And we increased sales by six million and margin by one and a half million over three years. So totally validating the comment. Excellent. Totally validating Excellent. the comment made. So that's what I'd like to speak to, and I don't want to exclude other genders or how other people identify. I just wanted to focus on the men element because they do still dominate, you know, senior leadership roles currently. Um, sure. Um, what I think is powerful, though, and I want to sort of start to look to bring this a conversation together, is as you spoke about the the power and the, you know, the, the wonderful role that mothers do, the, the diverse roles that mothers do. There's something for me, as, as you spoke just then as well, around this mixing of the masculine and the feminine energies in a positive, healthy, holistic way, to use your language, such that we can all thrive. Is there something there for you around balancing those energies more effectively as part of the work you do? Uh, not so much. I mean, I, I, I'm a speaker as well, so I speak on the topic actively, but on a day-to-day -day basis from a consulting point of view, I focus more on storytelling and marketing rather than diversity. Um, but I'm a huge believer in, in diversity. I, uh, you know, thank God I'm a happily married woman who has huge respect for men and for my father and for my husband and for the fact that they have been my biggest support. Quarters. Uh, I think it all comes down to the way you're raised as a human being, um, whether you're a male or a female. Yeah, so I'm a female today, but I have the utmost respect for males uh, mm. because I was raised like this. And if you're a male and you were raised in a way that respects women and the role they play in society, um, then then I think you know, you, you'll do the same, you'll reciprocate uh, as well. So I think the best thing we can do in the world um, is, is to start from raising our kids and the younger generation in the right way, because when you do that, you'll automatically have healthier workplaces. You can try to, to deal with the issue on a workplace level, but that's more of a shallow way of dealing with it anyway, uh, because because at some point it becomes like ticking, a ticking the box exercise. You know, I see all of these companies who just give lip service um, and talk about women and diversity. And, you know, like on a day to day basis when they're hiring somebody and they look at a candidate and they say, oh, so you were just a mother. Like that, that's not consistent with your lip service, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I think it just needs to start at home and at you know, it's, it's all about how you raise, raise your kids and you raise the future generation. I don't know if that answered you or did I go off topic? No, it, it's not at all. It's beautiful. No, the beautiful thing about this podcast is it's just a flowing conversation. No, it's really helpful. It's really helpful angle you just shared, actually. And I, and I really love 
I'm just really fascinated, look, your, your origin story and this really deep um, marketing. You, know, you have um, a BCom in marketing, a master's in communication. You did a digital marketing certificate. So like, this is really clear storytelling marketing thread throughout your life. But I'm just wondering, you know, what's next for Lubna in terms of, do you have any other sort of plans or projects or any maybe books to write? Because I think you know, your story and the way you communicate is so beautiful and so clear and so... So inspiring. I'm wondering what's next for you. Okay, so I try in my life to uh, not have many things on my bucket list. It's the way I live because I'm always terrified by, uh, because of my childhood, I'm always terrified by death. But the positive thing about this is that when you're terrified of death, you wake up every day and you say, I'm not going to leave any single thing on my bucket list and I'm going to live with purpose every day and, and live my dreams every day. But there is one thing that I still would love to do. Uh, so you can kind of call that on my bucket list and that's write a book. And I did start that, um, but I stop and start, uh, just given my crazy schedule, to be honest, with managing my home and my work. Uh, but that's definitely something uh, that's next for me um, and, and something that's in the process. And it's a book about influencing. Um, so, so that's next for me. Um, the other thing that's next for me in terms of, um, you know, coming up very soon next year, I was uh, very blessed to be chosen to take part in something called the social movement. Uh, the social movement is a global movement that addresses uh, social issues. Uh, and this is a TV program that's filmed in Canada once a year, and they are on season two next year in June. Um, so I was chosen to take part in this with my daughter. Uh, my daughter is 10 years old and she's the youngest reporter in the Middle East. So we were chosen as a mom and to be part of the mom and daughter th theme uh, to, um, to film that next summer. And we're going to be addressing cyberbullying. So we have four days in our team with a group of other mothers and daughters. Uh, to come up with a business plan to end cyberbullying. So this is something that's super exciting for me because I want to teach my daughter to take a stand in life and to stand for a cause and to be part of the social movement. So this is something that's um, next on my agenda as well. Oh, wow. And, and I, I can't even imagine how special that experience is going to be for you. Look, to, not, not only just for you, but to experience that with your daughter. That's amazing. Absolutely. I'm super looking forward to it. And what's, and what's your what's your hopes for her at the end of that project? What what are you sort of hoping she feels and thinks? Of course, she's her own person. I'm just wondering what your what's your hopes for her as she sort of steps into her sort of teenage years following that experience. So I think two things. The first one is to just uh, always remember to stand for something and to stand for a cause because that's the root of storytelling. A storyteller is somebody who believes in a cause and who stands for their cause and and doesn't let anybody or anything ever interfere with that so that's the one thing that I'd like her to remember from that experience and um, the second thing that I'd like to her to take away from this experience is a video record of me and her together because um, I just want my kids to have record of me and of my principles and of my beliefs. And I was a person who was completely offline, away from social media, completely all my life until last year. And um, last year I was watching a video of uh, Gary V. And in it he says, I do all of these videos because I want my kids to have record of me. I want them to look at my videos one day and remember what I stood for, remember my principles and my beliefs. And that for me was a defining moment. I believe in defining moments. It was a defining moment for me because I froze and I was like, oh my God, I don't have videos online. I don't have a social media presence. I'm not on LinkedIn. I'm not on Instagram. Um, I don't have, my kids don't have a video of me that actually, you know, will ever remind them of how I think and why I think the way I think. And when this happened, it inspired me to do the TED Talk. So that was the first, first thing I did. I sought a TED Talk or a TEDx Talk and I, I made it happen. Um, and the best achievement in this TEDx speech is not necessarily uh, people seeing it, although I'm very happy that people saw it and that's why we're connected today. But 
I wanted that TEDx speech so that my kids can see it live and so they can have record of it in the future so that they can refer to it and say, this is what moms stood for. So for me, I want my daughter to walk away from that experience next year and say, this is a video or a TV program showing me and my mom. And I will remember that all my life because I will remember what my mom stood for. And I remember that I'll always have to stand something for something in life. Wow. I'm... I'm having my froze moment as I hear you reflect on this. <laughs> Good. <laughs> no, really, I, I, I've not thought I've not thought of it like that before. I really haven't, and that's it's a really powerful. You know, yeah. I think the the reason why I think of all of these things is again, it's all back. It all goes back to my childhood, and I think if you reflect back on your life, also, it, you'll always connect that back to my childhood. For me, the number one, I fear nothing and no one, nothing except death. Um, and because I do that, I live a fulfilled life every day. And because I do that, I wake up every day and I think, what could I do to leave record? What? And so the book is an example of record. The TEDx speech is an example of record. The social movement is an example of record. Everything I do is an example of leaving record so that I leave a story behind. And that story, as much as I would love it for, to be for other people, First and foremost, it's for my own kids. Because if you want to change the world, you need to start by changing your own home and by changing your own uh, kids and environment so that you can raise healthy kids. Because when you do that, that's how you create a ripple effect of changing society. So for me, it, all the end result is always, what record am I leaving behind? And that's in various formats. You know, I started on LinkedIn only in Feb. I had, I had a LinkedIn account, which I never used. I never used to write anything on LinkedIn or release any videos and that that moment for me when I heard Gary Vee say that was a life-changing format for moment and I think what made it even um, stronger is I met the CEO in the same week and I was talking to the CEO and uh, he said to me he looked at me and he, he, he said how can you help me when you have no followers so for the first few minutes I actually sat there justifying my myself I, I sat there and said I worked for the best companies in the world I started naming them coca-cola the United Nations this and that I've consulted for the most important people in my life so I started sat there justifying myself to the CEO um, and then I stopped and I said you know what that's okay I'm going to add you on LinkedIn and if you don't mind I would love for you to accept my invitation deal he said deal he accepted my invitation the second morning I sent him a message and from there I grew my LinkedIn like crazy. And it's, I've been on LinkedIn for only since Feb. And my LinkedIn, I mean, I don't write every day. I don't put content out every day. But it grew significantly since then. But it's not about the CEO. And it's not about Gary Vee. It's about leaving record. That's all it is for me at the end of the day. Well, I, I don't think you could have pulled together the work you do, the... The message of you know the only thing we, that, that matter the stories we leave behind any better than you just did Lovna just your, your congruence you know I just I just think it's beautiful how how aligned and how congruent your mission is to serve others but also what you want to leave behind yourself it's it's so inspiring really thank you thank you so much it's hard work huh <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not always easy work to step into your power for sure but I think the it, it's, I think it'll be very clear to our listeners, those kind listeners that will join us um, in this conversation. But I just really want to thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for how you show up because it's, it's super inspiring, really. Oh, thank you so much for that. And I think if I can give advice to whoever is listening, when you choose to find your why or your purpose, and I have a video which I can share with you that you can kind of put in the comments section for to, these are 10 questions to help people find their purpose. When you choose to go through these questions and find your why or your purpose, you're going to be tested time and time again. You know, I've ever since I found mine and I've lived it, I've been tested time and time again. There were days when I'd wake up and say, this is too hard. I don't know if I can go on like this. I don't know if I want to do this because there are much easier ways to live. Um, but the only way you know that it's your true purpose is if you're tested time and time again and you still choose to do it. You choose to do it even if you have no money. You choose to do it even if you have to stay up all night. You choose to do it if you have to... Uh, whatever it takes, you still choose to do it. 
uh, although you're being tested. And that's when you know it's your true purpose. Such a powerful reflection. And thank you for sharing that with all of us, Libna. How can people find you? What's the best way to connect you if they want to follow up the conversation? So the best way to connect with be on LinkedIn. I'm quite active on LinkedIn. Uh, or they can find me on my uh, personal website, which is just my name, lubnaforsley.com, or my company website, stories.co.ae. So any of these channels are, are fine. I, I also have an Instagram account. They can connect with me there. I'm not, I'm not super active on social media these days, but I, I, I definitely have a presence there. That's wonderful. Well, look, thank you so much for sparing the time. Genuinely, thank you for all you do and have fun with your daughter on your, on your project. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything. Take care. Thanks, Libna. Bye-bye. Thank you.